Vandals and thieves are targeting the minibuses used to transport Portland's special needs students. They're going after the short buses. This is, that's nuts. That's nuts. I mean, talk about the low of the low. Everybody knows who rides these buses and they're mentally and physically disabled people. This is how they get around. This is how they get to certain aspects of their lives. And these thieves, they're just, you know, they're taking advantage of anything they can get going after the short buses in Portland. That's, that's a low, low, low thing to do. That's why we're talking about it. Cause these thieves. Portland public schools keep its fleet of yellow minibuses in the yard off an old grade school overlooking the Columbia River. The yard filled up long ago. Buses overflow into a nearby lot behind a city park. So you've got this juxtaposition between this beautiful setting probably overlooking the Columbia River. Then you got a bunch of school buses and various disrepair and you got a metal fence around. Maybe you got some barbed wire on top, maybe some razor wire. And then it just, it, you know, it's like bees to pollen, right? Okay. Yeah. We can steal some parts there and get our next 30 bucks, get our next two days worth of hits of whatever. The lots are secluded, perfect for thieves who for years have raided the buses for parts, but it's never been as bad as it is now. As vandalism skyrockets, emergency repairs are eating into the time that school district mechanics can spend maintaining the buses that transport Portland's special kids needs kids to and from school. I don't know if you've had anybody that's special needs in your life, but I have. I've got an uncle that's severely disabled physically and mentally. And, you know, this kind of thing, they, they have a hard enough life as it is. I mean, that kind of goes without saying. That, you know, for whatever, whatever reason they got where they are, life is tough for those folks. We have talked about, you know, the people doing the lawsuit against the city of Portland because they can't physically get around or maybe they're blind and they can't get around the homeless encampments lining the streets of Portland. So they're suing. Same deal, right? You've got people who already have, you know, obstacles that are just huge within their lives. They don't lead normal lives. And then you've got this kind of nonsense. It's just kind of like, what what are you you guys even doing? Burglars strike almost daily, armed with saws, drills, and rubber hoses, said Brandon Coonrad, the district assistant director of student transportation. They siphon gas, steal batteries, and hack off catalytic converters, as you do. The chain link fence ringing the lots have proved little deterrence. The situation infuriates drivers who have to walk the lots often alone in the dark to pick up and drop off buses, which they regularly find ransacked. A neighboring bus lot owned by Portland Public Schools contractor has reduced vandalism by installing 10-foot-high electric fences. A proposal to build one for the district is mixed in bureaucratic delays. Meantime, thousands of dollars worth of bus parts and the ability to maintain the existing fleet comes under fire. You're just like, ah, we can't deal with all this. What are we going to do? Well, in typical Portland fashion, we just kind of keep trucking on and hope that the short buses will continue to be able to run. Vandalism is a familiar problem in Portland in 2022. Graffiti dots the city's walks and catalytic converter thieves stalk neighborhood streets. But the plight of district special education buses is particularly frustrating, drivers argue, because it is preventable. The district owns its own minibuses, so it can provide superior service to its most needy students. That's who these folks are going after. These criminals are going after. The most needy of the students that are out there. So brutal. But lack security at its bus yards is undermining that goal, drivers say. And because the district is self-insured, taxpayers are footing the bill. Uh, Doesn't that make sense? Doesn't that seem about right? Yeah. All right whole thing, whole thing comes about because you've got criminals just doing stuff off the hook, right? And you've decriminalized drugs and you've taken all these crimes and you've made them into misdemeanors. You just got, you know, we talk about this all the time. You've just got this perfect setting for why this is going on and probably why it'll continue for a long time down the road because nobody seems to be able to take a hard stance on this kind of stuff. And you don't have enough cops to provide the protection you need 
for you know communities with various different needs. This one being the Portland Public Schools trying to keep their buses on the streets. Portland Public School yards are now an open house for thieves, said Carol Heacock, one of the district's bus drivers at a recent school board meeting. We need proper security to keep staff and students safe. This is sad, isn't it? I mean, this is, this is, you get what you pay for. You elect the officials that you do. I do want to say that um, Joanne Hardesty was not reelected. All the other things, the governor in the state of uh, Oregon, um, yeah, that went, that went Democratic. The majority of the positions in Oregon, uh, that were up for, for election. Yeah, they went Democratic. So if, if you're going to keep, you know, bringing folks in that aren't doing what they need to be doing, which is basically trying to protect the city of Portland, got that hardesty thing going on. That was, that was a step in the right direction, but only because it was so obvious that something needed to change there. So you've got politicians that have put all this stuff in play and here you are. And it's kind of like, like most, what most of you talk about is, well, you know, you get what you pay for. You put those people in office, it's what you get. Here's your social experiment just going wildly sideways. The problem is, you know, with this story, and you might say it about, wow, those business owners, they can take care of themselves. The people that this story is impacting, they can't take care of themselves. That's why they're on the short bus. You know what I mean? So yeah, it impacts a lot of people, but it impacts some people more than others. And these are these are folks, you know, that can't get around mentally. They're, you know, they've got various different kind of things. You know the drill. But the fact that this is being targeted, you know, it's an easy target. And um, why why wouldn't these thieves do this? Because it makes sense, right? You got a demand and supply issue, and you got a demand and supply issue for drugs, and so you got a demand and supply issue for crime. And right now, the demand is high, and they are supplying it. Right? For years, the district has been struggling with vandalism. It spent more than two hundred thousand dollars on graffiti cleanup in the past two years alone. A spokesperson told Willamette Week in September. How many catalytic converters for these buses could you work on for 200 grand? A lot. But you're not going to be able to do that. This graffiti is going to keep going. This criminal activity is going to keep going because the ecosystem in Portland is just, this is what it feeds on now. This is kind of what it is. This is where you sit. The bus lots have been no exception. First, the target was batteries a problem that gradually increased until the district began marking them with a unique identifier to discourage resale. Do not steal, mofo. <laughs> I mean, just, just put some enormous tag on the battery. Okay, yeah. This, had, this battery has been stolen. Something along those lines, right? I mean, and I joke, but then again, I don't because that's literally what they're doing. In 2019, the district conducted a security audit of its transportation facilities. According to the memo, it implemented many of the audit's recommendations, which were improved lighting, overnight security, and a specialized mobile trailer with surveillance cameras and motion detectors. But the district admits none of these measures slowed the vandalism. And, you know, honestly, why would it? Really only a cop out in front with flashing lights would probably stop this, right? And then while that cop is up the, up there doing whatever, you know, he's in the middle of his shift, he's six hours in on an eight-hour shift, whatever, eh, that vandal's going to go back around the side, cut a little hole and get in there and do their thing, right? I mean, they are sneaky. But the district admits none of these measures slowed the vandalism. The surveillance tower wasn't high enough to see over the roofs of the buses, once a thief stole the door off a district van and walked out of the facility right under the tower's nose. All right. These guys just have, they have no concern for anybody but themselves. Obviously, that's how you get there, right? It's been a joke for a couple of years now, uh, uh, Coonrod says. He's a former FedEx truck driver who now helps coordinate student transportation for the school district. When COVID hit, the problem escalated quickly. Now, he says, they're cutting a new hole almost every night. Catalytic converters were a favorite target. Around 20 have been stolen this year alone. The district lost so many catalytic converters that it bought a $30,000 pipe bender to make repairs in-house. 
When you get to the point where you're buying a $30,000 pipe bender because so many of your catalytic converters are being stolen, hmm, yeah, makes you reimagine and rethink what you're even doing, doesn't it? All right, what do you guys think? We've been swapping out a lot of these catalytic converters at five grand a pop, 10 grand a pop, whatever they are for a bus. I have no idea. It's got to be more expensive than a car, right? So yeah, we, we know that this is going to keep moving forward. So why don't we just do the pipe bender in house? And so somebody literally made that decision. Okay, it's gotten so bad. And we need this, we can't outsource this anymore. Let's get the $30,000 pipe bender. And we'll just well, you know, Johnny, you over there, you work that machine, and you take care of that. And Jimmy, you over there. Yeah, you, you work with Johnny. And you guys are going to be our in house pipe benders on the cats. <laughs> After police cracked down on a major catalytic converter trafficking ring, thieves found a new target, gasoline. Jason Carr, the district's maintenance manager, ducked under a bus to point out multiple patches in its exposed gas tank. Thieves drill holes and collect the sporting, this, the spurting fuel in buckets. So if you were wondering why earlier they bring a hose to work with them for their criminal activity for the day, that's why. Bucket. Drill a hole in the gas tank, siphon it out, take buckets, fuel, gas. Who do you sell gasoline to? That might sound like a really stupid question, but hey, I got some of the good stuff here. I got five gallons of the pure gasoline. All right. I give you, uh, who do you sell it to? Probably homeless people. Yeah. Right. The district spends 15 to 25 grand on hired security guards each month. And we're still getting hit. Coonrod says he proposed upgrading to electric fencing, but was told it would expose the district to unwanted liability. Oh, you might shock one of those criminals. Oh, that's too bad. I say we turn it up to 11 and see what happens. I think that's a good idea. As a public entity with active parks next to our property, it would have been irresponsible and against code. Sydney Kelly, a district spokesperson, tells, tells Will Hamlet Week about the electric fences. I say do it. I say do it. Do it. Turn them up to 11. Let the criminals fry. But yeah, I mean, you might get a, you might get a wrongful death lawsuit or something like out of that. Can't have that. That's not good. So the brazen th th uh, thefts continued. One night in late in April, someone stole a bus. A thief hotwired it and plowed it through the lot's locked gate. District officials tracked the bus down, and the next day, thanks to a tip on next door, it was parked in a nearby neighborhood. The lot has no closed caption TV or other video surveillance, but the buses do. Coonrad reviewed the footage and watched the burglar joyriding around North Portland, occasionally stopping to shoot off a few texts as you do. Hey, look at this bus I got. I'm just riding. I'm riding in style here in the short bus. This wasn't the end of the ordeal. The thief stole the bus's radio and began butting in on dispatchers with obscenity-laced rants as kids on buses listened in, the driver Heacock says. Could you imagine being on that bus and you're a kid and he's like, you, you know, you're talking to your friend and all of a sudden you hear the crackle over the radio and you're like, what? That guy just dropped the F-bomb. Uh, what? What'd you learn at school today, Timmy? Well, a guy got on the radio and he dropped the F-bomb 20, 23 times. Education in Portland, right? I mean, as if things aren't hard enough. Drivers began fearing for their safety. Arriving in the morning, they found their buses ransacked. Surprised they didn't find people living in the buses. The buses' emergency exits, by design, do not lock. Vandals make good use of the vulnerability, stealing safety blankets from underneath the seats. Christine LaFont took to bringing pepper spray on her morning route until she was told it was against district rules to carry a weapon on district property. See how this is all going? The wrong way. LaFonte, flanked by two other drivers, brought their fears to the public por uh, Portland Public School Board at its monthly meeting in October. A dozen other members of their union were in the audience wearing bright yellow solidarity shirts and waving stop the ransacking signs. Oh my gosh. I mean, this is how bad it's gotten. Hey, we need somebody to help us out because our buses are getting ransacked and we're afraid to go to our buses and you guys won't let us use the pepper spray. I would, I would hand them in my world, which doesn't have wrongful death lawsuits. I would hand them something good and say, Hey, you know what? If you, if you, if you 
can run across anybody. I'll be real quiet. You just do your thing and, you know, we'll call it good. We'll call it good. We'll be, we'll be even, Stephen. It's okay. You just do your thing. Keep the lot safe. Keep the lot clean. Searching for an intruder, drug paraphernalia, needles, and possible human defecation has become an unfortunate addition to our everyday pre-trip bus inspections. Is there human feces on the seat? Nope. All right. We're good. Is there anybody that's going to hijack the bus? Nope. All right. Is there a hole in the gas tank? Nope. Do we have a catalytic converter? Nope. All right. Guess we're ready to go. Let's load the kids up. Let's go. I mean, life is already hard enough for these folks, right? And their buses are just getting rocked. Bob Foster, a retired engineer who spent four years driving public uh, Portland public school buses slam district administration for ignoring the issue. Now, there's just so much craziness going on in in Portland that you know everything is just allowing this crime to impact everything. So this isn't this isn't anything special. It's just you're hitting the special needs school buses. So you know from that standpoint. You are stooping to the low of the low. This is just, I mean, it's insane that this is going on. But then again, is it really? Nah, this is just par for the course. This is one of those things. This is kind of the micro of what the macro picture in Portland looks like. And that's why I read these stories, because you need to know. All right, we talk about crime. What is that? What does that mean? You know, the sound bite that we just had in the elections. Last night was election night. That did not, that was not the red tsunami we thought it was, was it? No, it wasn't. Yeah, that was, that was barely a red trickle. In the end, I think people with an R in front of their name, I I think they're going to be, you know, just over the hump of okay. But man, way closer than what most people predicted. I thought it was going to be less than what I think conservatives were predicting. But it wasn't going to be the even Steven that the Democrats were talking about. It's going to be something slightly more. And that's where I think we're going to end up. We're going to have to see what that uh, that Georgia uh, runoff, right? See where things go. But here in Portland, you've got a situation where those on the very low end rung of society are having something within their lives and their parents and the bus drivers responsible for getting them around. That, that That's a tough job. Driving those buses, I mean, you're dealing with people who have physical and mental stuff going on that's way beyond, you know, getting typical kids onto a school bus that just hop up and, you know, walk to the back and sit down and do their thing and then they get off. You know, it's, if you put somebody on a bus in a wheelchair, a little different drill, a little different drill. And so then to have all this other stuff, it's kind of like, Mm, okay, let's take a hard life for all the folks in this ecosystem and make it just a little bit harder by monkeying around with their transportation. Yeah, drilling a little hole in their gas tank. Imagine. All right. I know we filled up last week. And now the gas tank says the gauge says it's empty. I guess we better crawl under there and see what's going on. Craziness, right? craziness. But it also makes absolute sense because you've created a situation where you've basically said, hey, Portland, you're open for crime. Let's let let her rip. Let's see what happens. Oh, this is what's happening. We're monkeying with the short buses in Portland. Wild story. But it makes sense, doesn't it? It makes absolute sense. Makes absolute sense. I feel, you know, sorry for the kids and the parents that have to deal with this and these drivers. This isn't something you should have to deal with. I understand occasionally now and then something going on. And that's kind of what historically it's always been. School bus yards get hit. You know, anything with any kind of value gets hit. But now it's just such an epidemic. The catalytic converters alone are such an epidemic. And I think, I think Washington state had the most catalytic converters stolen. In the United States, I mean, we're just rampant with that stuff because we got the demand for the drugs, right? And everybody wants to say, ah, it's happened all across the U.S. Yeah, but in these West Coast cities and a handful of other cities with leadership as such, it seems like it's worse. Yeah. All right. That's it for me in this one. Thanks so much for being here. Catch up with you in the next one. Bye for now. (laughs) 